We've officially began a new decade and gone are the days of spending thousands of dollars or hundreds of hours in order to get your brand off the ground. In today's age, you can now leverage technology and new apps and services that will help build your brand. And in this video, I wanna share with you guys how you can leverage those resources, but I also wanna discuss with you some keys to success that will take your brand beyond 2020. Because the reality is, it's a lot easier to begin a brand today than it was a decade ago. So you're gonna to need to know how to really stand out in order to have success. So if you're a new visitor to this channel, I highly encourage that you subscribe to be alerted of the latest episodes of the series where we help you build your brand and business from the ground up. So let's begin by going over what you're gonna need in order to start your brand in this new decade. You see guys, in order to remain flexible and really get started by leveraging everything that we're gonna share today is you're gonna need a laptop and an internet connection. More importantly, you're gonna need to be able to understand your audience, who you're gonna be marketing to, and then from there, you're gonna need to have that creativity in order to create a line of products that people are gonna wanna buy. And more importantly is the fact that you're gonna to need to set aside an advertising and a marketing budget in order to spread that word. Equally important is in creating the business plan. A business plan will allow you to set yourself apart from the competition and it'll give you an overall direction for what your brand and business is gonna be doing in the next few years. It's gonna be key as you guys continue to grow your brand and business in the new decade. So once you have your business plan together, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about a method that removes the barrier of, of you having to purchase hundreds or even thousands of dollars of wholesale blanks. Because you see, a decade ago, that's what you had to do in order to start a brand. You had to invest in the inventory, and then you had to invest in a print shop that was actually gonna make those quantities in a bulk volume. But today, in 2020, you're able to leverage this technology called print on demand. And today, we're taking you guys behind the scenes of Aplique's LA operation, and my goal is to really show you guys the different technology and printers and print methods that you can leverage in order to build your brand online. And best of all, it removes the risk of you having to spend thousands of dollars to get your brand started because you can get started with just one product and an audience and an e-commerce store. And I also wanna go ahead and share some amazing insight by interviewing some entrepreneurs that decided to come on this channel from people that are just getting started to those that are making millions online by leveraging this technology. And best of all, as you guys can see back here, is they literally, Aplique has already invested in millions of dollars worth of equipment that you guys can use without you having to pay for those millions of dollars worth of equipment, guys. So that's the beauty about this. And it's made possible with something that's called direct-to-garment printing and integrating it with your Shopify store. This machine allows you to print out full color it allows you to do one garment at a time, which reduces the upfront investment for brands that are looking to make their designs or launch their brand. And, uh, and maybe you have a line of cut and sew products and you wanna expand it with a couple of other products. Um, these types of machines are the way to go. And it looks, it looks pretty straightforward, right? You're just downloading things. I mean, I'm sure it's kind of complicated. <laughs> it looks Very a little intricate to get trained on it, right? Like, Yeah, I got this like rhythm going, but um we download the artwork into the computer. It's already, uh, the artist, they got the size for us and then. So he's adjusting every aspect of the artwork in this program uh, before the t-shirt actually goes into the production. And the cool part about this direct-to-garment printer is that it does everything at once. So it will lay in the pre-treat, I don't know the exact, specifications of the pre-treat but it'll it'll cure it all in one where some things have to be pre-treated and then they have to be thrown into the dryer or I mean uh, put into the press in order to get it prepared to cure this thing does it all in one which is really cool keeps things uh, flowing when we get big orders oh wow this is an interesting piece yeah see this one came out good yeah Check that out. Really fine stuff. Oh, shit. Fine, like, yeah. Super small print. Ah. So. And then from here, it just gets dried and cured. Cured, dried up. So right now, what I want to do is actually introduce you guys to somebody who 
actually works here at Aplique and recently started up their print-on-demand business. Want them to just kind of share some tips and advice and some of the successes they've had with it. Marco, appreciate you, bro. Thanks, so, man. how long have you been with Aplique? Uh, it'll be almost a year in April. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then you started up your brand about a year ago or something? Yeah, it, I kind of got inspired. I always kind of wanted to do a clothing line, but didn't know where to start. Right. And then once I worked here, it was kind of mandatory, I should, you know, to hop on that. Tell us a little bit about your brand. Like, uh, you're, you're, in, you're in a band too, or? Yeah, I kind of play it on both. So, my brand is Mark Hammond and I'm in a band and I kind of have like this like punk vibe. This is actually one of my pieces right here, yeah. Cool, oh, this is clean. Yeah, we're, this is gonna be in a fashion show in uh, coming in April. Oh wow. So yeah, oh, this, wow. Is this is some exclusive this is, right there. This is fresh, dude. So yeah. you guys did like the-, the Yeah, we did the hoodie part. liner for it and the embroidery. And then we also have, uh, we do printed labels that you can get out from us. Oh yeah. shit, sure. this is clean, dude. This is Thank fresh. You, Thank you. So this is something that you guys designed for your brand and- Yep, yep. And so, then yeah, and then I also have my band and I have uh, like band merch that we've made in the past where we do bulk orders, oh, get a lot clean. of um, profit that way. This is clean, this is clean. Thank so what, what has been like a successful uh, uh, sales, sales method that you guys had? How did you guys attract and get your first customer? Bringing a lot of the people who already liked the band over brought them to the, to the brand and kind of like interchange them both because I sell both on my brand website. So people who already like the music, it's like, hey, if you want to support, I also do this. So then, so you guys have been like building your audience, right? Yes. So like, uh, would you say that, that by building your audience, it helped you with those sales or? Definitely, yeah. Okay. I think people need more content to latch onto instead of just like trying to sell clothes. Right. Because they can go to the store and buy clothes. <laughs> right. So you got to like bring up something that, that doesn't come from the store, it doesn't come from corporate, so you have to like put your own twist on it. That makes sense. That's yeah. awesome. So what would you say is like the future for your guys' clothing line as, as uh, are you guys primarily online or? Yeah, we're dropship only right now. Um, we've done a couple like when we go to shows, I'll get a, a bulk order, you know, like 20 or something shirts to sell. Right. But I mean, it'd be cool. I'd like to do pop-ups at some point. Right. It's just more of a financial thing. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. And then, but it's print on demand allowing you to pretty much uh, make some extra revenue, monetize yeah. your brand and following. The print on demand is really like the easiest part that got me started because I think the part that made me not want to start was I had to, all this upfront capital right. and I didn't want to be in the hole. So being able to only have to pay for each piece that I make was kind of like got me in the door and kind of got my attention like immediately. As you can see, print on demand and the services offered by Applique makes it possible to run your clothing brand from anywhere as it easily connects to Shopify. Whether you're in a band and looking to sell merch or an artist looking to expand beyond the canvas, Applique's fashion on demand makes it possible for you to get started and begin fully labeling your clothing line. So now that you know how to start a clothing line in this new decade, let's jump into the fundamentals of getting sales and growing your brand. Hey Ian, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking us behind the scenes and showing us you guys' operation. It's, it's definitely a lot different than a large scale production and uh, you guys are servicing thousands of brands. Tell us about how it started and the evolution of the industry and how you guys are really positioning your print on demand. Yeah, yeah, I mean you probably noticed it's very different than other print on demand places you've seen. Our approach is definitely about building micro factories and work groups, so everything you need to make fashion uh, on demand, right? So that's combining sewing, like adding labels and embroidered patches and that type of stuff, as well as traditional things like printing and embroidery. But the goal is like a really finished, quality, retail ready fashion product. Um, and the way that we got into it was just like, if you know, humans have been making apparel for 5,000 years, but in the last 200 years, all of the infrastructure has been set up around mass production, like mass producing apparel. You know, for the first hundred years, it was all being done in the U.S. And then for the next hundred years, it was really all kind of pushed outside the U.S. to places like China, Bangladesh, Latin America, really more in the last 20 or so years. And that rise of mass production has really been tied to um, retail, right, and building up retail. So if you want to get your products into retail stores, you need a lot of inventory, right? right? Maybe you're trying to get into 50 stores, you need a couple hundred products everywhere. So it necessitated, you know, really, really cheaply produced goods um, and massive quantities of them. 
And um, with the advent of the internet and being able to like, quickly spin up these direct-to-consumer brands and selling online directly to your customers, it's like, questionable how important mass production is um, in that particular environment. So we really set off to be able to create these like, finished retail quality fashion products on demand. And that's what's led us to creating like a micro factory that's you know, very different than a traditional print on demand solution that you would see uh, elsewhere in the market. Right. And then of course, like equally important as your, obviously Applique provides those services for, for entrepreneurs and brands. But I think a big push of driver of sales for those products is gonna be the marketing and sales. Oh, uh, what would you say is the most important thing to have a quality product or to have a strong marketing and sales arm for your business? Oh man, it's like you really need both to win at the end. But if you could only have like a product or really strong sales and marketing, I, if you're just getting started, I'd almost start to lean towards sales and marketing because if you have an audience and you can drive traffic, you can work to figure out a product that's going to make a lot of sense for that market. But if you just only have a quality product and you're kind of searching for that market, I just think that that can be like super frustrating. So, you know, as you're starting a brand or you're scaling up your brand, being able to find that super cost effective way to build awareness, to drive traffic and to close sales on lines is like super, super indispensable. It's super important. I agree. And I think uh, for brands that are out there watching some, some, some things you should keep in mind about your marketing and sales initiatives is obviously beginning with events and word of mouth. So go, attending events allow you to really get real time feedback on the products that you're trying to sell. It'll help you narrow in on designs or perhaps some of the, some of the function if you're creating a custom product. And from there, definitely reaching out to influencers to work with them to spread your brand online. Um, and then never forgetting the SMS and email marketing and of course your paid advertisement. Um, but I think all of that together combined is what creates the perfect effect. You have a friend that's been killing it on e-commerce, right? He's been yeah, making dude. millions. <laughs> and uh, I wanna bring them in so that he can, you know, talk about some of the stuff and what might work. Yeah, I mean, Parker at Feet Socks, great dude, marketing savant, guru. And I think he'll have like a ton of uh, tips to share with us. So let's go connect with him and see what he's got for us. I had a chance to look up like what you guys did in the past, but I really wanted to, I wanted you to cover it. So I wanted, yeah. I wanted you to kind of share how Feet Socks started as a yeah. company that was like kind of retail focused, I would say, yeah. and how you did the transition to e-commerce and a focus on print on demand and yeah. more of like tailoring stuff to your audience. Taylor and I both went to school at UMass Amherst. So, you know, in the boonies of Western Massachusetts, but like the East Coast. And um, it's, it's like the polar opposite of LA, the polar opposite in so many ways. And Taylor and I didn't know each other yet, but we, one day he was in a class and he was talking about this business that he was working on. And I said, oh, that's so funny. Like I have this sock concept. I'm just getting going. I went to a trade show. Like, you know, I just think it's kind of this opportunity. And we just hit it off and we were like, oh my gosh, we could sell it this way and that way and this way. The reality was we had no idea how we were going to sell this. No, no intentions of building a massive brand, a small brand. We had, it was just like, let's see what we can do. You know, it's no different than like setting up a lemonade stand. Like you don't go out there and say like, we're going to do a grand today. You just go, you know, we hit campus the next day selling socks that we like made from buying socks at Marshall's, watching YouTube videos and then printing on them. And we hit campus and we sold out. And it, I think, I honestly think it was like $2,000 which is mind blowing yeah. to sell $10 socks, you know? Yeah. Like we, we sold like 200 pairs of socks and we were like, all right, what's going on here? Something's legit. You know, we got to see this further, see this through further. And um, we did, and we just never stopped. A couple years went by, you know, in the beginning, like, like I said, we had no idea where or how we were going to sell. We had never built a business like this before. So we don't know anything. Looking back now, it's funny to see what we thought we were going to do at the time. And we started, we thought we're going to sell into stores because that's what the other leading competitor does. So sell the stores. Like, to sell into stores, it takes whole infrastructure, you know, like seasonal catalog rotation, sales teams. We had nothing. We had Taylor and I, you know, like, and a couple of friends. Like, that was it. So that's what we did, and we were in stores, and then came out here to L.A. because Taylor got hooked on Influencer. Before Influencer was really a thing, this is early 2016, we moved into this building in Hollywood. And in this building in Hollywood, it was, it was done with intention. In this building with Hollywood was every major, like, Vine and YouTube star in one building. So we're like, this is the mecca of influencers or what would soon become influencers, right? It didn't exist yet. And um, the last thing we did before we left Boston was work with Ali Raisman. She was in the Olympics. Okay. And during the Olympics, women's gymnastics is the most viewed 
in all the Olympics. Right. Her line of socks crushed it. Did the hundreds of, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of socks with Allie. And that's coming from zero, right? We right. sold pretty much nothing in college, a couple grand, whatever. Did, got a deal with Allie Raisman. And then Taylor said, dude, we got to move to LA. There's more people like Allie. We can repeat this. So we moved in that building. And that's where we met Logan Paul. And Logan Paul was right on the way up. We moved, the day we moved in was the first day he launched his first vlog. Oh, wow. Like that was the timing, you know, pretty crazy. Funny to look back now and think like, right. we, we didn't even, no one knew how big vlogging was going to be. Right. You know, especially him. He's got like 20 million subs right now. Yeah. What um, did he have back then, what did he say? I think he was getting like 3 million views a video, um, very consistently. Our videos since that we did with him, we did a multi-video campaign selling like a single pair of socks, you know, like, right, and yeah, one design. There's no strategy beyond like, you have a YouTube channel, we have socks, let's sell. You know, like, it was like the least thought out thing. I think we could have quadrupled what we did, maybe more, but nonetheless, it was massive for us. He almost did a half million dollars in the blink of an eye. So like, blink of an eye, half million dollars in socks was mind blowing. Um, again, like if you kind of set the stage of where we were before that, we are selling nothing in college, a couple of thousand dollars here and there. Then we did Alley, that was a massive campaign. Then Logan. So we're like, oh, we know how to do this now. We don't sell to stores, we just do influencer. But what we didn't realize was we had the two best influencers in the world. There were arguably not many better influencers in the world. You know, Ali Raisman during the Olympics. Uh, Logan Paul, as he starts vlogging for the first time and is just exploding. So once we realized that you couldn't just repeat this and always just do a half million dollars with everyone you work with, so we realized we couldn't just replicate what we did with the influencer, so we had to look at our business and say, what the heck are we doing, right? And we were selling a ton of socks at the time, but we weren't making any money. And if you have a business not making any money, it's like, what are you doing? You're just spinning your wheels, you know? Yeah. Um, so we were paying everyone and not making any money as a business, so we had to reevaluate. And somewhere around that time, we stumbled into e-commerce. We met some guys that were crushing it in e-commerce, like Jake Casson of Movement Watches. And he kind of opened our eyes to that world and said, like, look at it through this lens. Like, check out e-commerce. Look how crazy it can be, how powerful it can be. Um, so that was great. So we started getting socks and selling them online and understanding e-commerce, the ins and outs of it, and what that even meant to sell online. And then months later, we met Ian and developed a relationship with Ian from Pleek and uh, Ethan also, both of the guys, we started talking about other apparel because we're like, okay, we're selling a ton of socks, it's kind of working, kind of not, it's a little murky. And he's like, oh, what about t-shirts, uh, hoodies, beanies, like these different things. And we started looking at it and we developed this kind of e-commerce thesis, things that we think will work in e-commerce based on kind of a checklist that we've come up with. You know, it's like our internal way of saying, do we think this type of product will work online? And we, we brought that checklist to Ethan and Ian and kind of came into the hoodie category. And we liked it for a lot of reasons, and it was great. A couple things that we look at is like competition, right? Like that's pretty common knowledge. You're entering a market, you want to look at your competition, right? So you want to play some, like, do you want to go head to head with the biggest guys there are? You know, when we started out, we were going head to head with the leading sock guy selling into stores, but they were backed with a hundred million dollars. So is that a game I want to play? Or do I want to find a new category or maybe the competition's a little less, or maybe it's underserved, right? So maybe, maybe 18 to 24 year olds aren't being targeted with super premium products or you know some sort of mix like you take different pieces and find a new mix for them and that's a lot of what we look at it's like where's the opportunity you know if everyone and the brother in this in LA is selling t-shirts like we're probably not going to sell t-shirts and there's no saying our thesis is the thesis right, right but right. everyone will kind of develop their own strategy and thinking behind why they launch certain products you you find an opportunity with hoodies yeah and you decided to do like a hoodie liner right i saw yeah. I, I saw your guys' line with uh with a pleat yeah. tell us about like how that came to be and like what you think made it successful there's a couple of things the first thing was we were dead broke at the time so we wanted to do hoodies great idea but most times when you launch a product you need a ton of cash right you need to buy a ton of inventory you need to find a great manufacturer to make a ton of inventory you bring it you store it then you start advertising you still haven't seen a dollar yet you start advertising and then you start selling finally you're getting your money back we had no cash we had negative dollars you know like we were just dead broke so we met ian and he's like man we have this plug-in it's in beta for shopify it plugs right into shopify you take orders you sell them we get the order we print it we sew it we stitch it put the labels on and ship it and i'm like so what how much do i pay for it you know and he's like you only pay what you sell and i was like wow so i'm doing fully branded goods you know whatever garment i want fully branded not like crappy just print and ship not that stuff fully branded goods and as i sell them you're going to make one at a time and ship them 
And it turns out, yeah, it's not like he was doing one at a time, but within the first couple of months, we we're doing thousands of hoodies with him. Which like, you know, do the math, let's call it a hundred dollar hoodie, thousands of hoodies made one by one. So it was mind blowing and it was it was really cool. In terms of design, it was like, we didn't know where we yet wanted to take the brand. We had a little bit of identity crisis at the time. You know, as, we, as you grow older in your own brand, your brand evolves, you know? Like what I liked when I was 21 versus what I like now turning 27, very different, you know? So at the time we just took sock patterns, put them on the inside of the hood. So it was, it was a crazy time, but that's when we said, okay, there's something bigger here. How do we build a, a long-term business that's a, a sustainable? Um, and Aplik and Ian, those guys, all of them were just like, absolutely the piece that got us from nothing, you know, only making socks to diving into a new category and then eventually kind of finding our way in what the brand is, you, you know, you see today. So just based on your experience and over the last few years of, of, uh, of developing e-commerce and new product launches, yeah. what would you say is like some, some key tips of sales and marketing advice that you might have for entrepreneurs for them to put into their mix of, uh, you know, the sales and marketing strategy? Yeah. I think you have to like really look at what your angle is and really try to give it like an outsider perspective, you know, because like as, as people that create product or design product or artists that design it, wh wh whatever your kind of role is, you like, oh, I can make this case. If I can only make this case, I can definitely sell it. Don't under underrate how hard it's going to be just to sell that, right? Like the assumption should be you can make an awesome product why are you going to be able to sell it? So I like to flip that different, you know, I used to look at it the, the, the old way. Um, and now I think, okay, if I can partner with someone like Aplique, I know I have the product locked down, then now I need to figure out how the heck I'm going to sell this thing, right? And if you can figure that out, you know, that, like, that's where all the challenge is going to be. It's not like you partner with Aplique, that checks a box, and it's absolutely essential in growing. Um, in terms of sales and marketing advice, like you really have to think about that. What's your angle? Are you really good at like marketing? Are you the, the technical advertiser? Is that gonna be your key uh, kind of tool or asset that you're bringing to the table that's gonna say, this is gonna set my company apart? For me, we met the movement guys and they optimized e-commerce and advertising on social media. I knew nothing about it. And Taylor and I looked at each other and said, one of us has to become an expert at this. That was me. So I did, I didn't stop looking at uh, all social media advertising for probably two years, you know? I was like, I have no idea what I'm looking at, but I'm gonna start. Right. And I became an expert, and then that became my asset that I can now plug in with my other asset that was a pleak. But yeah, to each is unique. Everyone's approach is different. So there you have it, guys. As you can see, starting a clothing line in 2020 has never been easier. And like we mentioned throughout this video, it's going to be important for you to target a niche audience in order to stand out in a crowded market. And more importantly, make sure that you integrate your story and that you have a real passion for what it is that you're doing because starting a brand is not simple. Some of the tricks that we just showed you will definitely help. And of course, using a resource such as Aplique to actually launch your brand is gonna be key in order for you to get started with as little investment upfront as possible. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button right down below. And don't forget to turn on your post notifications to be alerted of the next episode to From the Ground Up. See you guys in that one.